Hi everyone, as he said, my name is Sarah Barber and my capstone research was to conduct photometric analysis of asteroids. My advisor was Dr. Bill and I'd also like to acknowledge his, his um, graduate student, Aaron Cooper. They together gathered some data that I ended up analyzing for my project. Um, Um, my project went through big changes throughout my semesters working on it. Initially, the plan was for me to, to uh, obtain the data myself using the university's telescope and then to analyze them. I was going to take images of asteroids with low reflectivity at a point in their orbit where we could discern something about their surface roughness. However, midway through taking the images, the CCD malfunctioned, and the CCD is the, te the detector we use to take images. So it was decided that I would switch over to a new project, which, lucky for me, started right where I left off. And I obtained some images that Dr. Bill and his student, Aaron Cooper, obtained, uh, gathered at Kitt Peak National Observatory, which is in Arizona. And they took images of Trojan asteroids, and from them I created light curves. And I'll explain what Trojan asteroids are and also what light curves are here in a minute. So individually, my motivation for, the, for this project was to create light curves from these images. And a future goal for this project is for Dr. Bill to make subsequent observations of the same asteroids at uh, different points in their orbit and for other students to create light curves from those data points. And then ultimately, these light curves will be con combined to create a model of the three-dimensional shape of the asteroid. The shape is interesting because if you, can, if you know the shape and the spin rate of the asteroid, you can determine the asteroid's density. And if the density is known, you can, you can uh, obtain a limit on the composition. And you could compare the composition of these Trojan asteroids to the composition of the main belt asteroids. And if they're different, then someone could maybe theorize that these different groups of asteroids originated from different parts in the solar system. And this might give us a better understanding of how our solar system evolved. So first I'll explain what Trojan asteroids are and then uh, what light curves are and how you can discern something, from an uh, something about an asteroid's shape from them. And then I'll go through the steps of photometry, um, which is uh, the CCD photometry, which is just getting the image from photons, and uh, image processing, which is getting rid of things that will mess up your measurements. Uh, and then I'll explain what the complication was, because it was at this point in my project that I had to switch over. Uh, and then I'll talk about how you measure um, an image and how you calibrate these measurements to physical units. And finally, I'll explain how to create a light curve from these measurements, and then I'll present my light curves. And uh, this is an image of me this summer taking the images of those uh, asteroids with low reflectivity. And this is our 0.4 meter telescope. Trojan asteroids orbit the sun farther out than the main belt asteroids. They orbit uh, the fourth and fifth Lagrange points of Jupiter which are just points of gravitational stability. So at these points, they will orbit at the same rate as Jupiter, so they'll stay stationary. And here's a map of asteroids with known orbital parameters. Here are the main belt asteroids. These are the near-Earth asteroids. And then it's kind of hard to make out the blue on the black, but these two clumps are the Trojan asteroids. All right, so light curve. A light curve is a way to indicate how a brightness of an object changes throughout its rotation. And so if you, if you see a, a big surface area illuminated by the sun, you're going to get a, a big brightness, like a, your, the brightness is going to seem large. However, if you see something that's a, a smaller surface area illuminated by the sun, it'll seem more dim. And so if you have um, a shape rotating, depending on uh, where you're looking at it, you might see its illuminated surface area alternate between uh, something that's big and something that's small. So if you take a look at this diagram, you can see an orbit of an asteroid that's elongated. And uh, all celestial objects have a constant axis of rotation through their orbit. So if you're looking at the Earth, from the Earth to this asteroid, you're looking down the uh, rotation axis. And you see something like this as the asteroid rotates. It's the same surface area, but it's just rotated. So you get the same amount of reflected light and therefore the same amount of brightness. And your light curve is constant right here. However, if you wait and you observe the same asteroid at a later point in its orbit, you're looking perpendicular to the rotation axis, and you'll see the asteroid turning end on end. And so you'll alternate between seeing the side of the asteroid and the end of it. And so you'll get a bright, a bright signal when you see more surface area and a, and a dim signal when you see 
less surface area. And so it's easy to see how if you took light curves at all different points in this one asteroid's orbit, you can combine that data and get a model of the asteroid's three-dimensional shape. So photometry is the technique we use to measure the brightness of asteroids. And uh, the steps are go as you take the exposures, you process the images to get rid of things that you don't want to mess up your measurement. You measure them, calibrate, and then make your light curve. So the first step is to take the image. So what we use is we use a CCD or a charged coupled device to detect an incoming photons. And the way it works is a photon comes in and hits this silicon substrate and photo excites an electron from the valence band of the substrate to the conduction band of the substrate. And a way to preserve the location that the photon hit on the CCD, uh, there are these electrodes, which are called gates, uh, through which a voltage is applied. And that keeps the electron in place until the CCD is ready to be read out. So we have a grid of these gates. And so you have uh, numbers of electrons in each of these grids. And so those numbers can be reconstructed to form an image. All right, so we have the image. Now we want to get rid of anything that's going to take away or add to our to our measurement falsely. And so we want to make the uniform, the background uniform. There are various sources of background inhomogeneity. Um, one is the thermal signal from the uh, substrate itself. The temperature of the substrate gives the electrons thermal energy, and it's enough energy that they can be kicked into the conduction band and read as if a photon had hit the, had hit the substrate. And so to c combat this, we cool the CCD to about negative 30 degrees Celsius, but the CCD isn't always cooled uniformly. So you get some kind of gradient of thermal signal on the CCD. So to get rid of that, we use something called a dark frame. Another source uh, that makes the background not uniform is just pixel to pixel variations, which are usually flaws on the CCD chip or shadows of dust particles. And we use a flat frame to, to fix those. So here's an algebraic display of what's going on. Uh, we have the raw image. From it, we subtract the dark frame. From this resultant image, we divide by the flat frame. And we're left with an image that we can measure. So here's a, a closer view of this dark frame. And you can notice that there's a gradient here. It's warmer down here, which means we have more thermal signal and cooler up here. So we're cooling the CCD from, from this side of it, and it's, you get this gradient. And you can also notice these white pixels, which are referred to as hot pixels. And they're pixels that create their own signal. So they're white from frame to frame. So we can use this to get rid of those also. And here's the, oh, I should mention, the dark frame is taken with the shutter closed, so there's no light on it. So this is just an image of the thermal noise, or thermal signal. And uh, whereas the flat image is taken of, with the shutter open, of a uniformly illuminated surface. But you can see this is not uniform. You can, the most prevalent feature are these dark marks, which are probably gouges in the chip. And so those pixels aren't going to work. And then you can see these rings, which are actually shadows of dust particles that have settled on the glass that protects the CCD. And so we're going we're gonna to use that to get rid of these features. All right, so we're going to go through this process together. Here's the raw image. And I'll point out some of the features I mentioned earlier. Here you can see the hot pixels. And you can notice that the gradient, too. It's darker up here than it is down here. And these are the features from the flat frame, the gouges. And you can still make out one of those dust rings. So the first step is to subtract by the dark. And so I want you to watch for these hot pixels to go away and then for this gradient to smooth out a little bit. But you, and so th these are gone, and it's a little bit more uniform. But these features from the flat frame are still there, this ring and these gouges. So the next step would be to divide by the flat. So I want you to just watch for these to go away. So all the features are gone, and we're left with an image that we can measure. And I just wanted to show you a flipbook I made of some images I took. The color is inverted here, so the black spots are stars. And I want you to see if you can figure out which one of these spots is the asteroid. So what we're doing is we're tracking the telescope with, the, with respect to these stars, but the asteroid is moving with respect to them, so it moves with respect to our frame. 